not sunny out, yeah, my eyes have been squinty. Yep. And, you know, I've been trying not to put the sunglasses on. Let me put them on now. But... Watch out for pedestrians, you know. We still have the right of way. Yeah, I'm uh, recording right now. I figure we'd kind of film what we're talking about so we can, yeah, remember stuff. And oh, well, you're talking about roll over Washington. Yep. Yeah. So where's where's Washington? Is that that way or? <laughs> well, Bobby Powell says it's over this way. We're heading toward Virginia now. Oh, okay. Yeah. And and this, what bridge is this? Did it's he, the one that he says that he wouldn't jump off of. Oh, he wouldn't jump off? He uh, wouldn't recommend it unless you know how to swim with a loaded firearm. Yeah. Uh, well, which, yeah, I can see why he would say that, you know. I went through Marine Corps boot camp and, geez, we never swam with any firearms. So I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah? A little, a little view. Some fishers, fishermen. Yep. Wonder if they're catching anything. Hey, cast your net on the other side, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it's like. Yep. So yeah, we're talking about uh, skateboarding. Yep. Skating DC. Yep. yep. We are rolling over. Yeah, that's what we should do, roll over Washington. Put our, put our skates on and go claim what's ours, the people's. Yeah. Well, we need to pray about it. No. Like, I've never organized an event, and I don't see my as a organizer but definitely as uh, someone that comes up with ideas and has uh, interesting perspective on things. Sure. Non-conformist. Uh, yep. So yeah, um, somebody started up the worldwide Monsanto protest like just a month or so before they did it. But it wasn't it wasn't a uh, something they organized for a long time. Like had it planned for a year or so yeah. or two years. And yeah, no, it was it was quick and uh, and it makes sense and people need that. You know, we're more for you know rapid deployment, doing something on an instant, suddenly, rather than you know plan plan ahead for a long time. We're in an emergency situation in the country. People, yeah, I think they want to unify, and it's so hard to trust people. There's all these 
different opinions and if somebody doesn't agree with somebody they're thinking that they're working for the enemy but we all work for the enemy everybody in this country is working for the enemy you know we, we can't be like oh if they think somebody's spending their lifetime saying stuff just to deceive those people aren't in public people that are doing that that want to conspire that they're keeping secret they're staying uh, out of the public eye they're doing it from behind the scenes and all the so-called truthers or or whatever you want to call people who care and are trying. Uh, so we're, we're all on the same same side, you know, at least in the same show together. Uh, and so it is more, you know, the people need to be unified. Washington, D.C. will roll over for the people and reveal their belly like a good dog and do what the master says when the people are unified and work, working together. And there's a spiritual war going on. People are being separated more through their imagination. Oh, so-and-so is a, a gatekeeper or a disinformation agent or it's like the real conspiracies that are out there it's, you don't need the details. Just look at the numbers, look at the crimes. How many people are dying from pharmaceuticals, for instance? You know, what is the number? Is death on the increase? It is. Wow, we don't like that. Somebody might, you know, be interested in a certain aspect about it or something or blame uh, somebody like Rockefellers or something you know, are partially correct, somebody else might say it's something else, uh, and there'd be all kinds of disagreements about the details, but the things that we can really agree upon, you know, the federal government's out of control, they're abusing people, the Federal Reserve Bank is, is issuing money out of nothing, they're not giving any money off of their pile of wealth, but they're making us pay back 110% of the fiat lux. And I'm saying fiat lux, and they're saying, you know, oh, that doesn't mean money out of nothing. It's on the 33rd degree council uh, in their sacred building in Washington, D.C., their temple. It's a stained glass window. God said, let there be light. And that's what Fiat Lux really means. And But what it means to them and what they're doing isn't let there be light, it is let there be money. And they're covering for the Federal Reserve Bank. They get together once every two years to discuss money and politics. And they're the go-between between the dark lords that lord it over us, that are behind the Rockefellers, behind the banking, behind it all. They're not public figures. They're not names that we hear and know. They run this stuff. And uh, the 33rd degree council masons are their slaves. And, you know, we're being ruled over by slaves who have sold out who made commitments that they cannot even get out of. They can't do the right thing if they want to. Anyone that's sworn oaths uh, to any society other than the people 
of this country, whether you call it America or whatever, it's this people, this place, that's who we are. And they're not serving us. They're slaves to the dark lords and they're ruling it over us. And they should be serving us. They're there to be our servants. And but they don't take credit. They'll say, oh look, what a wonderful country that, that we made. You know, if they uh, do go for any acknowledgement, you know. Oh, we've given you a Fourth of July parade. You know, that's about it bunch of stuff that makes it look good but behind the scenes they've created zoning the cause of homelessness they've sold us out to the central banks there is no wealth in this country you know how wealthy we would be God required 10% payback we're paying 110% back it's a miracle it's a credit to the people of this country that we're building any wealth at all in this country. It's a credit to the people. Because I, I know a lot of people, and they're, they're good, they're careful with their money, they try, they invest carefully, they spend uh, in, you know, in a way to, to, uh, to have some savings. To, but most people can't, but some people are in this country. Against all odds. I know that America is doing a lot better than it's given credit for, and also a lot better than was expected by these control freaks. They've tried to take us down economically. It's not easy. You can't just take a country down economically, adjust some things. It doesn't work that way. And they've robbed us and robbed us of hundreds of trillions of dollars. We've got about probably less than 1% of the wealth that we've generated. All the rest of it has gone back to the central bank, to the Federal Reserve. Most of it through loans that are being paid back and taxes, IRS. The whole government is running on. It's it, it's so criminal. It's so unbelievable. And I would say that secret societies are. I'd like to say responsible, but they're irresponsible for it. They're not being responsible. And it's time for the people to make their government do for them. It is by the people, for the people. That's what our government's supposed to be. And they're supposed to be a good dog. And they're supposed to roll over for us. Now I got dogs and I know about dogs. And you know what you do to make dogs? You kick dogs, you chain dogs up, you do what you have to with the dogs, but you don't just let them do what they want to do because dogs will be dogs and that's the same way with the government what's happened and you look around the country and people treat dogs like they're people and it doesn't work out it don't work out and you can't treat dogs like people you, you have to take responsibility for the dogs we got to take responsibility for our government. We have to put the leash on the government. We have to say, down boy. We have to say, no. We have to say, come here. We have to tell them what to do. And that's why I think that the idea of skaters that we've been talking about, rolling over Washington, a very excellent symbolic thing to do in light of what Adam Kesh, Kokesh is about. Uh, I support him 100%. I, I know where he's coming from. I agree with, with where he's doing. I would say, you know, you don't start with anything less than 
you want everything. And that's what he's saying. And, you know, he just wanted to prove to the country, look, Washington, D.C., though the Supreme Court said their law about the firearms is unconstitutional, yet they're going to say, no, you can't come into the city. And you know what? Adam's right. We don't need to go there and prove that. But we do need to go and make Washington roll over and be a good dog. And uh, going there non-threatening with skateboards and skates, you know, and grinding their monuments, uh, <laughs> you know, that, oh boy, are they going to be offended, you know, it's like, oh, you're scratching up our stuff, you know, and it's like, yeah, but we're not hurting people and stuff like that. Uh, they can demonize people all they want that are on skates and skateboards and bicycles and whatever wheels that people want to use to roll over Washington and make them roll over for us. And it's like, you know, we're not really making them roll over. We're giving them the option. Adam said, do this the easy way or the hard way. And we want to do it the easy way and we recommend the easy way. I've had cops say the same thing. And I've been an example, I'm an example to Washington, D.C. because I'm here. And you know why? Because I did it the easy way. And they can follow my example. I had to give in to the police numbers of times, every time. I've been arrested many times for being a stand-up guy and them not liking my attitude because I talk straight. No, you're not supposed to say they're shocked or offended. Well, I'm offended and the crime has been committed against me. I haven't committed any crimes. I've never committed a crime. I don't commit crimes. I don't believe in crimes. I know what a crime is. And yet, I have a record. Matter of fact, I'm calling on all felons. Join up. I have a felony. I'm proud of my felony. I wear it as a badge of honor. I think if somebody doesn't have a felony, they're not trying. That's my opinion. But I do respect people who don't have felonies to have kept their record clean, because, hey, you know, mine should be also. But they're doing things to people to take their rights away like mine. They didn't want me to have guns. They knew. They knew I was a stand-up guy, you know. And they knew they'd be afraid to come after me if I got guns. So they disarmed me. And then they come after me. And there's a record. This isn't about me. My story is the same as the rest of the country. And I think we should go ahead and figure out this roll over Washington idea, work with it, try some stuff out uh, on, on others, see what they think, and uh, move forward. And I think that, you know, Bobby Powell should support anybody What's his thing, you know, him having such a problem with Adam Prokesh? You no. Know, Bobby said Adam's on an ego trip. Well, I'm watching Bobby and I'm like, wow, this guy's on an ego trip. You know? But then what's he doing? He's accusing Adam of being on an ego trip. You know? Well, I'll make a video and I'll show you an ego trip. Okay? I embrace my ego trip. I'm not on an ego trip right now. But I'll come back and explain myself, my ego trip, and, you know, I think we all should be having big egos in this country. We just need to know the difference between our ego and who we are, because our ego is not who we are. And I think Adam's got a great ego. definitely would uh, I have no reason not to follow Adam and I at this
this time I got every reason not to follow Bobby because he went and talked to the police in Washington and the police said no and Bobby said, oh, we can't. They said no, they're going to arrest you. You're going to have felony. Well, God damn this country for doing this to people, Bobby. You better say something. Come on, wake up, man. But this is your spot, Bobby. My son grew up in this town because he was separated from me by law enforcement, by his mother. But I don't think you're from Alpena, are you, Bobby? I wonder where you're from. I'm a Michigander all my life. And I grew up here. I've spent some time out west, too. I've been in the Marine Corps. And I had easy duty. You know, I was in Hawaii. And, but I didn't have an easy experience, because I stood up. And I'm a pot smoker. And most of my fellow Marines smoked some pot, and, and a third of them smoked it pretty regular. And yet, when I demanded a congressional investigation on drug use in the Marine Corps, and I'm talking about pharmaceutical drug use, and I'm talking about Thorazine and stuff being used on servicemen. Battery's about to die. All right. Yeah. Uh, I got one question. Yeah. Uh, in the scripture, it says something like, uh, you know, as you judge, so shall you be judged. And uh, a lot of people take it as, um, you know, oh, you're not allowed to judge. And I was just wondering what your perspective was on that. I think that there's something that's called discrimination. And... The world has taught us that, oh, it's wrong to discriminate against people. Well, the word discriminate actually means good judgment. And to, to make judgment against people because of their race or their sex or certain things about them is not good judgment unless, say, you need a black person for this or something and you're gonna you know say no we gotta have a black person because you know you're making a movie and you need a black person in it and stuff so yeah then you're right to discriminate <laughs> make your good judgment uh, but in general I mean there's no reason to judge somebody according to race but sex yeah you gotta judge people according to their sex you know, we're not all the same. And to pretend like we are, that's uh, just a pretend. It's not true. Uh, you know, you can pretend that. Uh, so make good judgment, righteous make judgment. Make good judgment. We're required to. We need to discriminate in our lives. It's very important. Yeah. And we're not doing that. And we're choosing between options. You want white milk or chocolate milk, but we're not really discriminating. People don't even know about raw milk and choices that they can make. And a lot of those choices are being taken away from people and, and it's illegal. But uh, yeah, so that's something about judgment. And uh, you know, I know I was saying that I was, about the drugs in the Marine Corps, I just want to say I was arrested five times in two weeks for marijuana, discriminated against. Uh, it wasn't good judgment yeah. on the part of the Marine Corps. And they did it because I complained about their use of drugs in the Marine Corps on soldiers against their will. And I see enough guys doing the Thorazine shuffle. Hey, Bobby, ever do any Thorazine? Seems like a guy and a guy that probably has been on. Anyway, I don't blame you. You didn't do it to yourself. They did it. Yeah, we can end this thing without yep. our batteries. Yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't even know I was going to go on and say this stuff. But. Yep, that's good. All right, back to Washington. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Go.